The American Deer and Wildlife Alliance is proud to present Deer and Wildlife Stories. I'm Keith Warren. Right on, baby. I'm a hunter. <laughs> a fisherman. That's what you don't want to do. See, that thing's gone all the way through my hand. A conservationist. Oh, come on. A family man. And I'm proud to be a deer farmer. Me? Yeah. I'm taking a road trip. And we're going behind the scenes of today's most innovative deer farmers and wildlife management operations in North America. That's not yours. Oh my God! <laughs> this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. A human couldn't suck that hard. It is the middle of August and it's hot. We're in East Texas at Bonato Creek Whitetails. And let me ask y'all a question. Have you ever wondered when a buck is too wide? Think about that, too wide. Well, the buck too wide lives right here. And you're gonna see him on today's show. Howdy, Brett. Hey, Keith, how's it going? Going good, man, going good. I'm sorry I'm a little bit late. Oh, no worries, no uh, worries. All right, I, I wound up, I just said, when is a buck too wide? I told everybody outside, when is a buck too wide? And I want to see too wide today, but what's going on now? Oh, just about to bottle feed some fawns. Uh, well, let's go we'll, see it. Let's go check them out. Ooh, air conditioning, huh? Yes, sir. Oh, howdy guys. How are you? Morning. Clay, Michael, and boy, look at there. What a contraption that is. <laughs> Boy, these guys are hungry. Goodness gracious, howdy. Okay, who needs one? Okay, I got number 15. 15! Oh, there's 15. Hey, leave her alone. Oh my gosh, look at this one's got its eyes closed going, oh, that is so good. That is good, oh, baby. All right, who's got number 17 jersey? All right, 32. Number seven, lucky seven, coming up. See, they even, tell me a deer's not smart. They even know their number. Number four. Hey, I'm looking for 32. All right, where's 15 again? Seven, siete. 25, come on, 25, I have 25. Come on, come on, come on. 17, 32, who's 32? Hey, somebody bring me 30, uh-uh. Who's this, number 15? Right. <laughs> hey, where's seven? Uh-uh, no. Okay, hold on. Which one? Wait a minute, that's 15, I think. Golly, this is this is hard. Okay, hey y'all, hey man. Nope, that's not yours. Come on, y'all ought to know your numbers by now. No, nope, you're nine. I don't, this is this is a nut house here. Could be six if you, oh, there's, no, there's 27. Hey, leave, leave that one alone. Yeah, this is a good time to show up. I like doing this, getting this over with first thing in the morning. Oh my God. <laughs> I fumbled, I fumbled the ball. This looks like one of my drink bottles in the airplane, it's inverted. Look at me, he just sucked all the pressure out. A human couldn't suck that hard. What, you're not gonna get, uh, uh, don't you start sucking on that. Anybody who has never fed, bottle fed fawns that thinks this is easy, it's fun, but it's not easy. This is a lot of work. And the reason why y'all are bottle feeding babies is so they can stay gentle. Stay gentle throughout their life and when they are bred artificially, then they're more likely to conceive. Now these are down to two a day feedings and soon they'll go to one a day. Right now these deer are having little stuff to eat. They'll wind up putting food up for them to eat so they start weaning themselves. And y'all just feed red cap milk mixed with some goat milk, huh? Where'd you run off to? Well, I had to have, had a couple that needed some personal attention. Brett's looking for his golf clubs. I wish. <laughs> All right, Brett, let's let these guys finish up. As soon as I get done with number seven here, let's let these guys finish up. I wanna see. I wanna make our way over to see Two Wide, and y'all aren't gonna believe Two Wide, I promise you. Okay, come on. All right, I'm gonna leave you with the guys. And we're gonna see the big boy now. All right. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by the North American Deer Farmers Association, New Dart, the North American Deer Registry, DNA Solutions, and Bonato Creek Ranch.
you know, this system, <laughs> as I say, this system right here, this looks like a lot like mine, but a whole lot better. <laughs> Goodness gracious, Brett. Yeah, the, the, deer, the deer handling system, the Papa, has worked real well for us. Check this out. Got ducting right here, air conditioning. Okay, air conditioning coming into these bins, and right here is where the deer will be. They'll be in here, and this little deal right here moves deer from this one into this one. When they get in here, you just simply slide this closed, and this door, the cool thing about this, this swings either way. Once the deer is in here, you can open this up and see the deer in here. And then to get him in here, you open this up and you just take this and push it. Boop. Brett, explain what all this gadgetry is right here. Well, what we have here, each box has a white and red light for, for uh, when we bring the deer in. So um, if we're needing to get, you know, um, the, the deer coming in, mm -hmm. we'll turn the white light on and they'll, they'll come straight to the light. Well, at that point, we'll turn the white light off and the red light will then turn on to identify what deer we have and because uh, the red light doesn't bother them. Okay. And, uh, you know, they're calm. And you, we actually got AC going into each of the each of the boxes. So with the red light on, we can say, hey, we got doe 819 here. Um, and then also we got the scale. So mm -hmm. we know what doe it is and how much that doe weighs when she's in the system. But what is all this about? Well, when we're AI, this is our dosage that we have for, for each doe. So we want to give them, when we're putting them to sleep, we want to give them the exact amount that they that they need. So okay, so you can weigh them right there, and then you can get your dosage right there, and it's exact that way. Exact. You're not estimating, well, 130 pounds, and it's really 100 pounds. That's right. I'll be doggone. And then once they get in here, this is where they come. They're going to yes. come into the handler. And every place that I've been has the same handler. This is the Papa handler. Right here, and that's the big one. They make a mama, and then they they also make a what the baby now? A, ba a baby, I believe. A little baby one, but but I've got the everybody's got the papa. But they come in here, you get your hands on them, you do what you need to to them, and where do they go from here? The good the good thing about this handling facility though is is it, it fits for everything. I mean bucks, does, and even fawns. I mean we squeeze the shoot down into mm -hmm. the fawns. Mm -hmm. So, but from here, what we do is there's there's a guillotine here that's worked by this gate here. Okay. We run that gate. Um, if we're separating does, we'll send them to a certain holding room. Mm -hmm. And then if we're AI, we'll go to the AI room to where they'll go to sleep. If we're just vaccinating them, we have a door that releases them straight back to their pen. All right. I've heard about this kind of facility, but this is unbelievable. This is really nice. Tell everybody what this is. Well, what we have here is uh, all of our pens funnel into a rotunda like home plate style where we just bring the deer strictly into this, this home plate area. Everything's blacked out and they just shoot straight down the alleyway. The this is an facility. efficient way to do it. Okay, so uh, which door is two wide behind? One, two, three, four, nine, 10, 11, 12. He's behind three. He's behind three. Well, let's look behind three. <laughs> Let's get everything done before it gets actually too hot. I want to come back and see him. What is this right here? What this is, Keith, is this a, it's a handle all of our alleyways on a pulley system. Huh. So when these deer are running down the alleyway, all we have to do is once they get past this point, you know, we can pull this pull this lever here. <laughs> Look at that! And it shuts them off. How cool alleyway. is that? So where'd the guys go from bottle feeding? Well. When they get finished bottle feeding, they go straight to the pens. Each, even though we have free choice protein feeders, mm -hmm. um, they're in the pens every day, putting fresh feeding troughs and fresh alfalfa, along with treating them peanuts, just to kind of keep them calm and you know interact with the deer. Okay, good. So, cool. About once a week, we'll come in here and scrub the the trough and bleach it out. What we'll do is we'll come by each water trough and we scrub. We'll scrub it with a brush. Does he do that everywhere? Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by Chaffee, pasture in a bag. 
oil field camo, record rack deer feeds, and SNS whitetail galore. The trait that I believe that deer breeders all over the country are looking for more than anything is width in their deer. And the good thing about the Venado Creek deer is that they have bred specifically for width. I mean, the, you take a look at uh, Two Wide right here. He's an incredible deer. He's uh, 30 plus inches wide and they sell semen to breeders all over the country that want to increase the width on their deer. So uh, that's one of the good things going on here at Venado. located in St. Augustine, Texas, 30 miles east of Nacogdoches. We've been in the deer farming business since 2006. We got in the deer farming business because it was a, we've always been avid hunters and you know it's been a f big family um, hobby of ours and uh, so we started a, our ranch with the intentions of uh, stocking our own personal family property and from that point on we started a breeding operation and are now a full-time breeder. You know, too wide. He is uh, he's a six-year-old breeder, which is we would like to think is a lot of luck involved in him. Um, he took a big jump at five after we moved him to our farm, and ever since then has has done great for us. He's um, 32 inches inside with a seven by seven mainframe, which a lot of deer don't have that. You know, he's got over 60 inches of brow tines, which is a characteristic that a lot of farmers want. Um, you know, overall, he's just got the total package that every breeder will want. He's, uh, he's definitely proven in his offspring, and uh, you're starting to see wide genetics coming from him. Um, and if you're wanting those wide genetics, two wide semen is for sale. We have a personal guarantee on our semen that if you buy a straw semen and only split it between two does, we'll guarantee you conception out of one of those two does. If for some reason either of the does do not take to AI, um, with a certified vet, then we'll replace the straw seam. You know, the, the whole purpose behind the guarantee is that we want to see other farmers succeed. And, um, you know, putting too wide in their herd, I think, is a, a positive uh, direction toward that. And uh, that's why we make the guarantee because, uh, you know, it's not about us being successful with too wide, but too wide's offspring being successful in other people's herds as well. You know, deer farmers in Texas over the years have, have started bringing in northern genetics to increase the size of their herds and, and whatnot. Um, but now you're seeing Texas semen go up north, just like Two Wide. He's a, a hot commodity there, and you know people are starting to use him. A lot of farmers get in the business because it's something that they love to do, and we love to do it. But at the end of the day, it is a business. The deer industry is nothing like any of the past fad industries where you might have um, the emus or the very different um, exotics that were, were built up at times. The deer industry has the end user market, the hunters, and all of us are hunters and the passion for the white-tailed deer has been here for centuries. It's not going away. I think the one thing that stands the strongest for the deer industry today is that it survived a very tough economic time that most businesses did not survive in 2009. And you still see the deer, the deer values for the, for the better deer remain the same. The middle to upper end have continued to re remain the same and the values and prices of deer adjusted very little in the downturn in the market in the U.S. economy. At Venado Creek, we encourage all you guys to come out and visit our farm. It's We'd love to sit down and go through pedigrees and explain to you why, why each deer is what it is. That way you have a full understanding of the gen genetic background of that deer. Our farm is located on a 1,400 acre ranch here in East Texas. Uh, we have a 5,000 square foot lodge overlooking a um, 10 acre lake. We have just over 300 deer in our pens, uh, about 120 fawns that hit the ground this year uh, with about 80 breedable does and then about 60 um, bucks that are growing out of their antlers. These deer are actually lucky. I mean, we take great care of them. You know, they're fed multiple times a day. They're watched every single day. We vaccinate them. We, uh, if a deer's sick or injured, you know, we bring him straight, bring him or her straight in. And it's just uh, these animals, the love and care that we have for these animals is, you know, way better than they would get under any other circumstance. If you're not a deer farmer and you're interested in getting the business, 
come by some of the annual shows. I mean, there's Texas, the Nadifa Conference. Um, you know, we have booths at all these shows, and, and we'd be glad for you to stop by and visit us at our booth. Uh, if you're interested in getting into the deer farming business, I, I strongly suggest coming and visiting a lot of farms, uh, whether, you know, it's Texas or up north, there's farms all over the place, and every breeder's willing to help. I mean, it's a very competitive industry, but, you know, we want to see other breeders succeed as well. So, um, you know, come by and visit our farm. We'd be glad to show you our stuff. I think the, the important part of, uh, of the top breeders is to guide, not just to sell the deer to, to a prospect, but to guide them through every way that we possibly can to help make the right choice. It'll be beneficial for them to grow in the industry rather than to just make a sale. And at Venado Creek, that's, uh, that's our goal. To, we want repeat business, we want uh, satisfied customers, and we want them to do well with our deer when they purchase them. If you want more information about our operations, feel free to look us up on the web. We have pedigrees, pictures, and a whole lot more. You know, a lot of deer farmers get in the business. It's, sometimes it's a hobby, sometimes it's a business. Fortunately for me, um, you know, I get to treat my hobby as a business, and I'm very fortunate to, to work for Jim and uh, you know, just get to run this operation, which is something I love to do. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by Bad Boy Mowers and Multi-Terrain Vehicles, BuckBreeders.com, Whitetail Sales and Service, and SemenSupply.com. Breed only the best. Well, it got hot, didn't it? It didn't take long. Keith, I got a few things in there, a list of chores Mike can help, you help us take care of. Uh, I'm gonna run to town, I gotta go meet Jim, so uh, if you don't mind taking care of those while I'm gone. No, all right. Here's the list right here. Are you kidding me? He just drove off. He just drove off. Jim, man, I'd like to see the look on his face now. I left him a list a mile long. You know, I, it's kind of funny, but I can't believe he actually fell for all those chores. <laughs> They're not gonna come over here right now. It's too hot. Ooh. Tell you what, that's a big prize there. Taking everything else from me. Alright, get this thing loaded up. Oh, I'm not kidding you. There's work on any farm, and that's the truth. Anybody that's ever been on a farm knows it, but on you know, a deer farm especially, I think I'm being taken advantage of in a bad way. Boy, what a place. That does it for today's show from Venado Creek. And if you're wondering what Venado stands for, it means deer or buck deer in Spanish. I'm heading to another farm and I'll see you next week. I hope you enjoyed today's show. 
And for more information on today's featured deer farmer, contact the phone number that you see on the screen right now. Or you can log on to our website where we'll have a direct link from our site to theirs. And now a conservation message brought to you by the Hunter Heritage Foundation. Theodore Roosevelt left an indelible mark on hunting and wildlife conservation that surpassed his achievements as the 26th President of the United States. Roosevelt feared urbanization and warned that without wilderness and wild game for hunting, the nation's values would deteriorate and threaten our American traditions. Those fears have come true. More of us are disconnected from nature than ever before, and every year, Bulldozers carve up more natural habitat for shopping malls and strip centers. From 1982 to 1997, urbanized land in the United States increased by nearly 50% and developed acreage per person has nearly doubled in the last 20 years. If we don't slow down urbanization, more of our wildlife will be trapped by steel mountains and concrete canyons struggling to survive in pockets of habitat cut off from ponds and feeding areas. Sportsmen are the world's number one conservationists, so it's up to us to defend wildlife. Join wildlife-focused organizations and support habitat zoning within your own community. Talk to your legislators and let them know that preserving wildlife habitat is not a political option. It's an American tradition. You can now watch full episodes of Deer and Wildlife Stories and our sister program, The High Road, online 24-7 at keithwarren.net. While you're there, check out our Facebook fan page where you can become eligible to win prizes and more. Look for our new program, Ranch Properties TV, coming up this summer. This program is dedicated to the brave men and women of the United States military, past, present, and future. May God bless America. Coming up next week. We take tether balls mm -hmm. and put a sticky paste on it and hang it up when it blows in the wind. If there's a deer fly or a horse fly around, he's going to land on that ball. And when he does, he sticks to it. You'll catch every deer fly and every horse fly in your pen. Yeah.